triple integrals. Let's take a look at this definition here. It says a triple integral of a function f of x, y, z over a rectangular box is defined as the limit of lm n going to infinity of the sums of change in x, change in y, change in z equals the triple integral of x of f of x, y, z, dv, over the region b, and that b being three dimensions. So honestly, when I look at this triple integral here, given some function of f of x, y, z, this tells me here that this calculation would be a four-dimensional calculation. Now, it could be a three-dimensional calculation if f x, y, z equals 1. Then I could call it a three-dimensional calculation, like a volume, for instance. Otherwise, I could be four-dimensional, where this f, x, y, z could represent a density or something of some sort. So we can still have those four dimensions. Okay, now look at the theorem below here. It says Fubini's theorem for triple integrals. If, x, if f, x, y, z is continuous on a rectangular box, b... Um, x being from a, a to b, y being from c to d, and z being from e to f, then the triple integral of f, x, y, z, d, v over the region b is actually uh, dx, dy, dz of f of x, y, z, the integral, and the bounds for act, dx are a and b, and that's what we see here. And then for dy, it's c and d, and that's what we see here. And then for dz, it's e and f, and that's what we see for the last one here, which is my z. This integral is also equal to any of the other five possible orderings for the iterated triple integrals. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, too. So... What that's really saying here is we can actually change these dx, dy, dz. We could change the order in which we integrate them. So we'll talk more about that later. There's a problem we're going to do, too, that addresses that issue. Or not issue, but that characteristic. So let's take a look at our first example here. All right, so here it is. And I just kind of put that Fubini's theorem here as well. So look at this number 184. So we have this triple integral of this region B, and that B stands for box, where this is my function now over dV, where B is the values of x, y, z, where x is between 0 and pi, y is between 0 and 1, and z is between negative 1 and 2. So what we're going to do here is we're just simply just going to integrate it. All right, so let's do it. So we have this triple integral. Now, we can take this in any order we choose, but I'm just going to take it as it sits, dx, dy, dz. So z sine of x plus y squared. dx, dy, dz. So my x goes from 0 to pi, so I'm just going to put 0 to pi here. And then my y goes from 0 to 1, so that's here. And then my z goes from negative 1 to 2. And there's my triple integral. Now again, it works just like the same with the double integrals. Then I'm working from the inside out, so I'm going to do my dx first. So I'm going to deal with this integral initially. So now instead of in a single integral like the uh, double integrals we dealt with in the past, we're going to have two left over while we work on the first one. Okay, so now remember the x is what I'm taking the integral of with respect to x. Okay, so the integral of this is going to be negative cosine of x. So negative z cos of x plus, I should say, x, y squared. 
And that's going to be from 0 to pi. And then we still have dy dz. All right, so then for the next one here, now we're going to have to plug in those bounds. So I still have the integral from negative 1 to 2 and the integral from 0 to 1. And then when I plug in those bounds pi, pi into here is going to be negative 1. So I'll actually write that out. So negative z times negative 1 plus pi y squared minus, and then the lower bound. So negative z and cosine of 0 is 1. So that's going to give me negative z. And then I would say plus, and when I plug in 0 for x, I get 0. So I don't need it. So I just get negative z. And then that's dy dz. So now let's clean this up a little. So that's going to be the integral from negative 1 to 2, the integral from 0 to 1. And this is going to be a positive z plus pi y squared plus z. So that's going to be dy dz. So then this equals, and that's going to be the integral from negative 1 to 2 and the integral of 0 to 1. And then now it's going to be with respect to y. And anyways, I can put those z's together too, and I will. Um, that's really just going to be 2z. So then I can take the integral of this with respect to y. So that's going to be 2yz. And then it's going to be plus one-third pi y cubed. And that's going to be from 0 to 1 dz. And that's going to make this one a little easier just because it's 0. So I'm going to get the integral from negative 1 to 2. And then when I plug in the 1 for y here, that's just going to be 2z. And then when I plug in the 1 for the y here, that's just going to be 1 third pi. Then when I plug in the 0, when I minus the bottom lower bound off, that's going to give me 0, and that's going to give me 0. So I don't have to worry about that one. And that's going to be dz. So now I just have to integrate with respect to z. And that's going to be z squared plus 1 third pi z. And that's going to be from negative 1 to 2. So then that's going to give us, when we plug in 2 there, that's going to be 4. And then I'm going to put a 2 here. So that's going to be 2 thirds pi. 2 thirds, oops, 2 pi thirds. And it's going to be minus, the bottom's, bottom one's going to be 1 for this one here. And then when I plug in 1 for this thing, that's going to give me 1 third, or pi third, sorry. And then I can put these things together. So then my final answer, which I'm going to go upward, which is terrible. So this is going to be 3. And then this is going to end up being a negative and a plus. So that's going to end up being 3 pi thirds or plus pi. And there's the answer for this triple integral. So just remember, you just uh, work from the inside out, just like you would with a double integral. We just do it one more time. So there's our answer.